Hello everyone, I'm the Solar Gamer, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. This is going to be a short video. It is going to show you guys, uh, I don't know, a little rendezvous on the moon, and uh, basically rescuing a stranded Kerbal. Alright, so I already have these ships underway, and I would have constructed them on camera, but they were really, really hard to, uh, to perfect. Yeah, as you can see, I've got, uh, six designs, the last one being the, the winner, and then the rescue craft, I've got three designs. This took a lot of time, so obviously I couldn't show the whole thing. Alright, so let me show you the, uh, the Mooner Lander first. So, this has, uh, three stages, well, three main stages, I should say. And, uh, this is the lander up here. Now, when this is coming in for a landing, this pod and this pod drop off. So, uh, we just have these two right here on the sides. And, uh, yeah, no, I've tested this out. It works. We should have no problems there. The real problem came when I was trying to build with these large fuel parts and the larger engines. I kept having these large engines basically fail somewhere in here and fly off into the rest of the rocket and blow it all up. Uh, but I have worked out the kinks, as you can tell. This is the successful rocket. And let me show you the, the rescue craft really quick. Okay, same problem here with the uh, the larger parts. It took me a long time. Now this may look a little bit smaller, but I've tested this as well, and it will land on the moon. The only thing that lands on this thing is the main center pod. Okay, cool. So let's get back to the, the lander 6, and let's take off. The only thing I haven't tested is uh, the rendezvous, so th I have to make this perfect. It's going to be interesting. Alright, ready? Take off! It's not the answer to the words that I have kept inside Just the direction that I chose It's a very large craft. Okay, so, uh, while this is flying, I think I should, uh, inform all of you the the newest update update point seventeen that is going to be coming out actually there is no real release date yet but it's in the works uh, so IVA was planned for the last update but it was pushed towards this one so we should be seeing uh, you know internal cockpits camera view stuff like that which will be cool another thing they're adding are planets they're gonna add I think five new planets a uh, gas giant, a red planet similar to Mars, a purple planet. There was some screenshots. Oh my god, we are rapidly turning out of control here. The only thing I need to look for, it doesn't matter if we really turn all that much, I just need to know that we need to go towards that 90 once we hit this, actually. Alright. Perfect. In fact, let's try to turn this a little bit more here. Turn on the RCS. Alright, now let's drop it down. Perfect! Right there. Right there, I said. Come on. That's a light show. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, yeah. Turn those off. Alright. Now the cool thing is, is why I added these solid rocket boosters is that it'll speed up, you know, the time it takes to get around the planet, which is really one of the biggest things that I had a problem with was fuel. Not so much on the single capsule, but uh, on the bigger pod. Okay, they are done. Goodbye! Yeah, and we have one more fuel tank on the, uh, the liquid engines. We're already around Kerbin, so... Now, I'm not going to try to go for a perfect orbit around Kerbin and then go. I'm just going to go straight for it. Because that's what I want to do. <laughs> Alright, so we lost that. And now we have the landing rockets that are going to take us... Wow, this looks so much like something out of, uh, I don't know, Star Trek or Star Wars. Just looking at the back, you know, with the, <laughs> the cool effects it has. Awesome. All right, cut. Maybe a little bit too much there. That's all right. We definitely missed the moon in the first shot, but um, we'll come back around to it. All right. Now, one thing that I have to do is disable the flow on the the landing, you know, vessel. 
I don't want these two side engines to run out of fuel because we're going to be landing with them. Uh, but these ones that don't have the landing legs on them can detach once they're, you know, spent. And then the ladder drops down here, and uh, basically, he's on the moon. This can technically return home, but uh, we won't let him. <laughs> We're going to pick him up in another pod. As you can see, our Connex path has made a moon encounter on the next orbit around of Kerbin. To be honest, I'm not all that good with pinpoint precision. So what I'm basically going to do is try to, you know, create an orbit around the, the moon, but setting it down is another thing. And, you know, setting down the, the rescue craft is going to be another challenge for me. So I'm going to try my best, but I'm no expert. Goodbye, Kerbin. We will see you hopefully shortly. <laughs> All right, off to the moon. One of the cool things that I like about this this path is that it tells you, you know, if you were in real time, how long it would take you to get to this encounter. Right now it's telling me an hour and three minutes, but obviously we're speeding up time, so that's going down drastically. All right, seven minutes till we hit the moon encounter. Oh, there's the moon. Hello. How are you doing? And we are now in the moon's gravitational field thing. Awesome. All right. So quickly, I should have actually done this before. All right. Quickly go over to the other side here. And we're going to burn. Oh, uh, we're almost at moon escape. Okay. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right, there we go. Yeah, the, for some reason there's a bug right now, and I don't really understand. Technically, in a few minutes you'll see that we will be still around the moon. Yeah, see? Uh, it, it's just a glitch. I don't know why it happens. I think I have it set too high on, you know, projected path. So we're going to want to get this around 20,000. I think that's what we're going to do. We have... Plenty of fuel left. Yeah, plenty of fuel. We're only on our first tank for the, uh, the, the for the small liquid fuel engine, but that doesn't really take up much fuel anyways, so... 20,000 meters. Let's get close and let's correct our orbit. Look at all the junk around Kerbin. God. That's... that's not right. <laughs> There's actually junk on the moon, too. Huh. I don't remember leaving that there. Yeah, I definitely have um, it set a little bit too high, I believe, because as you can see, it thinks we're going to be escaping, but we're actually in a full orbit around the moon. Or maybe it is just a bug. Who knows? We'll figure it out later. Just don't mind the lines. All right, that's close enough. We don't need to be that close. All right, so that's going to want to be 20,000. Okay, that's uh, relatively good, as long as we're... Okay, we're not even horizontal anymore. Well, all right, so let's, uh, let's bring it down. All right, so we are out of fuel on these little pods here, so let's uh, first stand it upright. So nothing falls onto us. And goodbye. No, no, no. Don't hit it. Don't hit it. Oh my. Alright, um. Get away. Goodbye. <laughs> Adios. Have fun slamming into the surface of the moon. Why, it's lagging out with the RCS. Good god. Alright, turn RCS off then. And now, we burn. I don't know if you can see this, but there's something in the distance. Uh, it looks like a pillar of some sort. Maybe we'll go check that out. Actually, you know what? We're probably going to be landing very, very close to it. If not, right on top of it. <laughs> that would be cool, because I didn't even know that was here. Well, we've turned this little, uh, this little mission into a... an exploratory mission. So I'm going to turn on these engines really quickly, just to slow us down some more. About 200. 
Okay. We should probably drop the legs. That would help us. <laughs> I mean, we are 15,000 meters above, but still. Okay, right about now, I'm going to want to slow us down to about 50. Good. Perfect. Yeah, this is a very, very reliable lander. I haven't had any problems with this. You just need to, you know, manually control the fuel consumption in these two uh, parts. Which is fine. Not a big deal. We're going to drop it down to about... 30 here. Okay, a little bit too much. That's alright. Still fine. We're just going to be descending slower than I would have wanted. That looks like a... Oh, God. What is that? Yeah, that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to go explore that. Jedma, you're going to be a very, very famous lunar explorer when we get back to Space Command on Kerbin. We're going to start to make out the little white specks of rocks down below. Which means we're getting close. Alright, we're going to crank that to about that much. Good. Perfect. A nice and relaxing stro- oh, there's Mimus. Hello! Hi! I probably won't ever be able to land on you. Alright, I lost my spire. Oh, there it is. Alright, so it's right over that long distance. <laughs> Alright, well that's going to be a little bit of a trek. We are almost there. The white specks of rocks are getting bigger. I would like them to add lights. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys have seen the Winter Owl or the White Owl, but he does some amazing Kerbal Space Program videos. Seriously, guys, if you haven't checked him out, do that now. He is absolutely crazy. He does use a lot of mods, but uh, no, he is he's a genius. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, he showcased the uh, a light mod and it, it was awesome and I really think they should add that and we are almost there wow this is pretty high elevation for moon for the moon about 4.5 meters per second and we will touch down very very lightly it for some reason it does look like we're touching down very very hard but we're not Whoa, 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 whoa. That's what I call a landing. Extend the ladders. There should be a key binding towards that, but that's all right. I don't mind. And, uh, yeah, we have landed. Now, I am going to go check out that spire. Do, 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 do. This is one small step for Kerbal Kind. Yay! I didn't know that you could right-click on the, uh, the Kerbal to see how much fuel he had left. And I'm sorry, that's my mistake in the, uh, point sixteen update video. But, yeah, you can actually tell how much he has left. And you do replenish it by going back into the, uh, the command capsule. This is gonna be a long trek. I am just gonna cut to when we get close. Looking back, you can see the glorious lander right there. So, maybe this is how he gets stranded. Right? Yeah, he runs out of fuel. Off exploring a, a spire. We can roleplay a little bit. This isn't the, uh, the main series, which I hope to get work done soon. There's just been some things that have come up that I had to put aside that series. But trust me, I am still planning on working on it. You know, with update point sixteen. We did have to update, but I still have, you know, the save file, which is good. Thank God I saved it. Okay, touchdown. Okay, so I just looked at this map here, and, uh... The spire is way, way over there, and I didn't even make it that far from my lander. I don't think... I'm gonna be able to walk over there or it's gonna take a really really long time and I would walk 500 miles at no 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 singing no singing Jed my okay guys so I've decided to essentially call this off I have gotten I don't know less than halfway there and it's been two hours uh, I could see what it is from here it's a ring 
And I actually have seen this before. There you go. Pretty cool. But, um, yeah, so we're gonna have to, uh, call this off and send a rescue crew. What a coincidence. <laughs> yeah, we are just about out of fuel. Let's just waste this right now, just so we can't cheat. Alright, and all we have left to do is send the rescue crew. Alright, Jedmai, we'll be back for you in just a bit. Now, this is the part that I am rather nervous about. I don't, like I said before, I, I can't really pinpoint you know, where I land on the moon, I'm gonna obviously have to try because two hours and I only went, I don't know, 10 kilometers? Yeah, it's not much. So I need to land very close to uh, Jedmai. But before we take off, we're gonna need uh, a seat on the, uh, the capsule. Well, Kirk is definitely not leaving because that's just awesome. Malong. Yeah, maybe. Halzer? You know what? Malong, you sound weird. Goodbye, Captain. We're gonna have a new one. I said, goodbye, Captain. <laughs> Thank you. Alright, Kirk, you're in control now. This is your ship. <laughs> Alright, let's go. God, look at that. It's like... Eyeballs. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> Whoa! That's not supposed to happen. Alright. Cut, 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 cut. Cut. We're gonna want to separate everything to save these guys. There we go. Separate that. Separate those. Separate the uh, the SAS and parachute. Lander legs and some thrust. And that is how you safely land a ship. <laughs> See, I was just testing that. It's this. I planned this. Also gives a good fireworks show for the, the boys in, in the control center. Once we get back on the ground, Kirk, you'll be in command of another ship. Good. Alright. What I think happened is one of these, the solid rocket booster accidentally hit one of these things and knocked it off. I've never had that happen, but... I guess it is plausible. Let's just, uh, just for good measure, strap this to that. Perfect. Now it shouldn't rock. Fildren! We no longer need your service. Goodbye. I guess, uh, we're ready to go. So, Kirk, take us away. Okay, separation of the first set of rocket boosters. Now, um, the thing with these large rockets is that no matter how many times you test a rocket, uh, there are still possibilities for something new to arise, a new problem. So it's it's kind of iffy even now that I know that this works. So let's just hope that Kirk can pilot this thing. And, uh, we'll get to that stranded Kerbal. Okay, drop those. Damn it! God damn it! This is what I'm talking about. Alright, we're getting ready for round three. Barney, I'm sorry, but, uh, this is not for you. You know, I have to say, though, I am very happy with your enthusiasm, but this is a, uh, a rescue mission and we need an extra seat so you've been cut sorry so uh, let's go let's hope everything works according to plan this time all right so let's hope that when uh, everything detaches everything is perfectly fine I really hope that uh, we can get this underway and rescue 
that stranded Kerbal. Okay, here we go. <sighs> Damn it. Alright. I have an idea. What I'm gonna do, I mean, this was never a problem before, and I don't know why it's just happening now, but uh, I'm gonna switch this decoupler for the uh, the one that sticks out a little bit, and uh, let's hope that fixes it. Yeah, it's not even touching the, uh, the solid rocket booster anymore, so please work. Uh, it, lo it looks stable right now. doesn't look like uh, it's doing anything funny. Uh, Corwig, we will not need your services. So if you could please exit the ship in an orderly fashion. Perfect! Alright, uh, jump back to the ship. SAS on. Throttle it up. Captain, take us away! Wait, what are we heading into? What is all that stuff? Hang on. Lunar Rescue Craft 3 Debris? What the heck? I don't understand. As long as it doesn't hit the craft, I will be mad. Alright, there we go, look at that. Clean. Cut. Drop. Alright, we're gonna turn here. And... Go! All that debris is falling back. The random debris. And... Lost that, lost that. Get away from that a little bit. Cut the power. Okay, cool. Now let's burn. That was awesome. Alright, cool. So we're now up here. <sighs> yeah, I don't know why that just occurred all of a sudden, but uh, I'm not going to complain about it. We fixed it. Now, I would be doing this closer to the apoapsis, but the thrust on this little thing would not make it around in time before we, you know, came back into the atmosphere. So I'm doing it right here. It may seem a little bit inefficient, but uh, it's going to help us out a little bit more. And it's draining from the, uh, the, the outer pods, which is good. We still have um, another one of 200, so half of this one. And then we have a larger one of 1600, so we definitely have enough to land on the moon and return to Kerbin. At least I hope so. That all depends on if we can land where we want to land. Now I'm just going to push this uh, apoapsis out. I'm not going to worry about getting a, a, a good orbit around Kerbin. As long as we're above 70,000 on the periapsis, perfectly fine. I just don't want to waste fuel, you know making the orbit around Kerbin perfect when it's not going to matter. And... Stop. Good. Perfect. And we still have, like... No, that's empty. Alright. And we just started on the second fuel tank. Now we just gotta wait till the moon picks us up, and, uh... We will be golden. Goodbye, Kerbin. We will see you very, very shortly after we get there. Kind of seems weird that we're going away from it, but we will get there. Okay, cool. So we just lined up for um, an encounter. They should have an icon, like a head of a Kerbal. <laughs> that would be cool. Oh god, I am really nervous about pinpointing where we're going to land. I don't want to spend, you know, five hours just walking over to this craft. I will do it, obviously, if I can't get it exact, but I want to try to get the landing as close as I possibly can. Okay, cool. Now let's move the craft over to this direction. We should have RCS on right now. Okay, and burn. Stop. I think I might have um, messed that up a bit. Let's move over here to the direction of travel. Let's see if we can move this out a little bit. Okay, cool. Let's wait till we get closer to the periapsis. And we will fix this orbit. And burn. We're going to get within uh, 10,000. Okay, good. Apoapsis is down. Come on, hurry up. Close enough. Good God. I think I might have messed that one up a little bit too much. Yeah. Oh, God. I don't know where my Kerbal is. He's somewhere in between this. Get out of my way, son. 
He's somewhere in between this and that. He's in between that. So, now I don't know my orbital mechanics, but if I burn this way... Nope, wrong way. Wrong way. Okay. Yeah, this is the only thing. Changing direction or, you know, fixing it is the only thing that I don't understand as much. Good. Just like that. Okay, I've got no fuel left in the pods. Fantastic. Let's get rid of them. Goodbye. You were very useful. The moon is rotating towards us. Okay. So, actually, you know what the problem is? That I have to burn off a lot of speed. So I have to go a little bit farther and then start doing this again once I get closer. God, this is why I don't do this stuff. If I pull this off, I am going to be extremely happy with myself. I have tried to do rendezvous. I've tried different things to test if I can do this on the planet. And I can't do it at all. And uh, I really just hope this... What is that? Lander Debris. How come I don't see that on my map? We got the pods floating by us now. Okay, burn off a little bit more. See, I don't have a big window to burn. As you can see, we're getting really, really close to the targeted area, which is in here. Alright, stop. The good thing is that the rotation is in my favor, because this moves up a little bit. I can burn a little bit more without, um, you know, having to speed up. Wouldn't that just suck if uh, <laughs> the debris actually came down the landing zone and killed my Kerbal? <sighs> I'd be so mad. Alright, that's my Kerbal right there. He's about a hundred kilometers away. It's not showing him as a purple marker, which means you can control it, but I can definitely get back to him. I can see him in the tracking station, so that means that I can control him and he's still there. He's still doing good. Let's drop those lander legs in case I forget. And... Well, no, you can go a little bit more with the burning. <laughs> This is getting me really nervous. I don't want to miss my opportunity here. 50 kilometers away from the Kerbal. And the thing is that we're so low in the atmosphere right now that I need to quickly change my direction or else I'm going to slam into the surface. We are coming in way too hot here. We're not even going to make it. The elevation is way too high. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, let's go. Let's save this thing before it crashes into the surface and we lose everything. The whole mission will be defunct. Oh, 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 I just got lucky. I am losing it here, guys. My God. Let, let's just drop here. Let's just drop here. Okay, alright. Just tip over then. Perfect! Now, while I did not land correctly, I can kind of glitch my way back up. If you can see right here, I can throttle up right as he's doing that. Okay, let's get closer to this Kerbal. <sighs> this is some tricky stuff, guys. In fact, I think our landing spot's gonna be pretty much on top of that Kerbal. Alright, let's burn just a bit.
God damn it. I am just... Come on, over to the Kerbal. Can we do that? Jedmai, we're coming for you. I see you down there. All right, we're coming in for a landing. God, this thruster is so powerful on the moon. Okay, and... I see a little dot down there. Come on. Stabilize, stabilize. No, 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 no. Oh! My gosh! I am so happy right now. Look at him. Look at Jedmai. And look at us. We got so close. I really didn't think that was going to happen. <sighs> Alright, let's send the crew to welcome him. Kirk! Okay, stop messing around. Go greet our explorer. The stranded Kerbal and his rescuer. Alright, let's go back to the craft, buddy. There it is, and there's the welcoming crew. You've already met Captain Kirk. Now you'll get to meet Jack. You've made it! Wow, they are very... emotionless. Okay. Let's go home. I think if I uh, keep holding it at that purple dot, I think we should just be able to, you know, keep going up and up and up until we enter, you know, Kerbin's orbit. Right, orbit, yeah. Good! Awesome. Alright, now I'm gonna get into the orbit before I slow down. I don't want to uh, get caught in the moon's orbit again. Why are you guys freaking out? I don't understand. Alright, and there is the arc. I mean, I did take the camera over and look at it, but, uh, that's cool. I am just so glad I pulled that off. That's This is actually my first time getting so close to Rendezvous. Ah, oh, damn it, the moon captured us again. Okay. Alright, let's burn it a little bit more. Come on, right there. Uh, okay, we just lost all power. Because the fuel is gone. <laughs> oh my god. It was a good try. It was a very good try. To be honest, I'm just really glad that I can, you know, do that now. But, um, no. What will happen is we'll basically come crashing down to the moon. And, uh, that'll be the end for these three. What would be really cool is if we slingshot it around the moon, back into orbit, and then we can do another rescue mission. Let's see what happens. No, no, no. We're just going to slam into the moon. <laughs> well, guys, it was a really, really fun trip with you guys. Well, I tried, okay? I really did try. God damn it! I can get mad here, right? I can rage. <laughs> now I know I can do it, though. And while Captain Kirk is, um, dead, uh, I don't know if you guys remember this, but, uh, during Star Trek, Captain Kirk did return to a certain moon and crash and kill himself. 
and uh, his companion was Jack, and he was rescuing Jedmai. So, um, I was basically just doing this historically in the Star Trek universe, just so you know. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, that's depressing, but it was also a bold step into the future. Because now that I know how to, you know, get really close to a landing on the moon, we could do better things. So Kirk, Jack, and Jedmai, you will be missed. But that's the end. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.